Joining us now is State Senator Dave Osmick. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good morning, guys. Morning. What uh, what brings you in today? Well, uh, I, I hope I don't sound too silly. Uh, I, I had a little incident last night, or oh, yeah? yesterday afternoon. What that happened? sounds like you're having a little trouble speaking. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to sound too much like Vin Scully or something. I, <laughs> I went out to the Renaissance Festival, and this is uh, let's file this under the category of look before you drink. What happened? Because uh, out of the Renaissance Festival at this time... Was there year, a sword in one of your beverages? Not quite, but it feels like it. Uh, you get a lot of hornets out there. Oh, God. oh no. And I had one in my cup, and I didn't know it. Uh, so it stung me, and for the re- for the next two hours, I had a balloon inside my mouth. It just it, it, it went away, but now it came back this morning again. So I'm I'm sort of talking on a broken tongue. Which you know what? For politicians, that not, might not be a bad thing. <laughs> uh, did you? What were you drinking? Uh, it was mead. Mead. Did you drop your mead? What it happened? Oh, I spit out what I had. <laughs> did you drop your cup though? Because if I have, if I got stung in the mouth, I would have flipped out. I would have thrown the cup at the rest of the bees. Uh, I have a dragon flag that I bought many years ago. It's really nice glass, and I did not want to break it. And thankfully, I did not. So. See, you're the kind of politician we need who, uh, even under intense pain, uh, keeps a cool head. Well, that, that goes along with being in a session last year. Intense pain actually <laughs> describes what we were in, in the middle of, and, and now we're finding out that the intense pain isn't just stopping uh, at, the, at the doors of the legislature. It's now with the tax policy. Now, we, earlier this year, we were told by uh, uh, Revenue Commissioner Myron Franz and Governor Mark Dayton, with the increased funding to cities and counties from state government paid for, with a $2.1 billion increase in taxes, that property taxes would go down and taxpayers would feel relief. Right. In we, order, didn't, we didn't a, believe it then, a, and we don't believe it now. A promise that uh, the Democrats can claim, no, we're tax cutters, when in actuality there was a huge tax increase, hoping that property taxes mm-hmm. would go down. Uh, Senator Osmond, has have property taxes gone down? Well, let, let, let's look at a few cities here, and uh, we'll start with the good news. Okay. In the city of, I hate to say it, in the city of Minneapolis, there's some good news for the people that live in that that locality. They are they got twelve and a half million dollars worth Jeez. of LGA increase. Increase. It's around seventy million, isn't it? A year now. Uh, basically, pretty close to that. I got okay. the numbers here. Something. Seventy million dollars to the biggest city in the state. Sure. I thought LGA was for the small towns that couldn't get uh, a police and fire uh, police car and a fire truck. You're right. What That's, is M- Minneapolis doing with seventy million dollars a year? That was the that was what it was supposed to be. They started out their LGA for this year was sixty four million. They're going to go up to seventy six million. Oh, so, okay. Then I'm going to start saying eighty million. They yeah. got an eighteen percent increase. So. Uh, and also, don't forget about this one. We also put in the sales tax exemption. Every local jurisdiction now has sales tax exemption. They don't have to pay Minnesota sales tax. Now, I asked Minneapolis, what did you do? What kind of uh, revenue do you expect to save? Because now you're going to save money. And we at the Capitol, I think all, even the Republicans and Democrats all agreed, this is a good idea. They actually got a $5 million wow. reduction in their costs. So put it all together. It's about $17.5 million. That's rough impressive. Or take. That they get to give back to their taxpayers. They gave back, and, and and this is the good news, R.T. Ryback in his proposal gave back a half a percent, to, which is a tune of about $2 million. Good use it to the tune of, and th- let me just repeat that again. Minneapolis is going to make $17 million more this year because, of, uh, because of money from the state and, and, and money from uh, these, uh, from the sales tax exemptions. Right. And they're going to give back out of the seventeen million two and a half under RT Ryback's proposal. It hasn't even gone to the uh, city council yet. Your T right. stands for Tea Party <laughs> Tax you're, Cutter. You're right. And by the time they get done, I'm pretty certain that those guys on the city council over Minneapolis are probably not going to settle for that two and a half. They're going to probably whittle it down to maybe a poultry million. Now, what does that account to? Per capita, by that two million dollars plus, they will be giving back the equivalent of a Big Mac meal to their each constituent in Minneapolis. That's how that's how good and Big their Macs are on sale is. this month. They're <laughs> filling. But that's not as, that's not as bad as what's happening in the fair city of St. Paul. In St. Paul, they received $10 million. It was a little over $10 million in LGA. Okay. They are going to be receiving about a two and a half, two point one, two point two, two and a half million dollar reduction in sales tax. So now we're at eh, twelve and a half million. Uh, the uh, Chris Coleman, in his infinite wisdom, gave zero. Zero dollars back. Absolutely, positively zero. Now, that, that actually... So are they aware that they're killing the governor's narrative on this? Uh, I don't know. I could have swore that they had made some arrangement with, <laughs> with Governor Dayton and the rest of the crew to actually go along 
with uh, we're doing in at least short term property mm-hmm. tax reduction. Now I'm going to ask you. Now you've heard those stories. Let's talk about Red Wing. Red Wing, fairly conservative, nice little town uh, down in southeast Minnesota. Nice shoes. <laughs> right. Ma- Matt Schmidt represents the, that district. Uh, they received a 161% increase. Wow. $1 million <laughs> is what the new dollars that they got coming out of St. Paul. That's 161% increase. That's impressive. Now, what would you guess here? Now, if you got 161% increase... You've already heard the two cities. Would you think that they would, they would either re- increase their levy, reduce their levy, or keep it the same? Well, I would imagine that uh, the best I could hope for is keeping it the same. That would be the best you could hope mm, for. Yeah. The uh, the people on the city council in, in Red Wing have proposed a 3.9% increase oh, they in their levy. So here we go. Matt Schmidt. Uh, Matt Schmidt sent out his own flyers, and he's got his own publicity you know, group. And he actually put out a uh, memorandum. Uh, it was his, uh, uh, his capital update. i got it right in front of me. You guys can see. You can yep. verify this. This is his capital update. He said this. This is what the DFL was saying before we left the legislature in May. He said... Uh, greater metropolitan or greater Minnesota property taxes will drop 6.3 percent. Now, 6.3. Now, <laughs> not a half percent, not zero percent, not plus three percent. I'm pretty good at math. Look, going down 6.3 and going up 3.9 is about a 10 percent swing. I'm sorry, Senator Schmidt. You should not have said or even told your constituents Ten point there was swing. anything in resulting from this other than additional spending. And I don't blame Red Wing. Red Wing can do what they want to do. That's the good part about about our, our system of government yes. is they can do what they want to do. But Senator Schmidt, don't you start telling the people in Red Wing or anybody you know, in, in, in that area that you're reducing any property taxes because you ain't doing it. Uh, this is, this is some, a pattern that I've noticed uh, ever since the governor uh, and uh, Myron Franz came out and said, oh, we're going to lower property taxes. Uh, there have been a number of uh, uh, cities and counties that have come out. There have been very few that have actually been able to cut. Anoka County is one that have been, have been able to uh, mm-hmm. cut their levy. But I believe Hennepin County, Ramsey County, they're not going to be doing anything like that. Uh, and then you've got cities like, I think, what was it, Moorhead? I think Moorhead got an increase in their uh, local government aid and are ending up uh, increasing their levy by something like 11%. I'm going to chase down the actual number. I can tell you exactly what they got here. Yeah, Moorhead uh, Moorhead Council passes preliminary 11.3% levy increase. And then Duluth, the city of Duluth's uh, school taxes could jump as much as 11% if uh, if uh, the uh, people vote for uh, the increase on the ballot. Yeah, Moorhead went from $6.7 million to a little over $7 million to the tune of $287,000. And they keep on increasing taxes. Excellent use of to the tune of. <laughs> stole, you're stealing my bit that I stole from Adam Carolla. Here, 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 we've got to take a break after this, but here is what is incredibly interesting for me. When uh, Governor Pawlenty cut LGA, pro- local property taxes went up because cities had less money from the state coming in, so they, they filled that. And there's that no hole. place to cut in their right. budget. There's, uh, every, every dollar is every, valuable. Yes. Uh, and, and essential. So they raised property taxes, and the DFL campaigned on, they said, Republicans raised your property taxes. We raised holy hell saying, no, no, no. that's done. at the, the State legislatures can't raise property right, taxes. That is done at the city and local level, and they need to they need to make that decision on that level. So that that's, that's what we said. That's what we said. So now that Myron Franz and Governor Mark Dayton predicted, and apparently State Senator Matt Schmidt predicted, that property taxes would be cut, and it's not happening. Watch them say... Oh no, that's up to the cities and uh, city, right, cities, right. cities to make that decision. Well, that's not the state. Le- the state legislature. We have no power to control can't them. Raise your property taxes. <laughs> well, he can try, but he's not going to run away because we are going to hold these people accountable for the bil- bilge water that they were selling out of the uh, legislature. And I was on my city council when we had the same cut. We lost almost a million dollars between a bunch of different funds that were there, and we did increase taxes. I hate to say it, and I'll mm-hmm. admit to it. I did one of the first votes that I had on my city council was to raise taxes but that's because we are responsible we have to have police we have to have fire but before we raise taxes the first thing we did was we cut out programs we cut out a lifeguard program that turned out to be just a jobs program for for kids during the summer as a former lifeguard 
It's a great program. Well, I'm sure it's it is. Gig. Except great if gig. Your, your choice is between having your police on the streets or having, your having uh, for three months out of the summer, a few lifeguards. But, Dave, aren't lifeguards kind of like water police? <laughs> I've seen Baywatch. More with Senator Dave Osmick when we come back. 651-989-5855. Bilgewater on Up and Adam, Twin Cities News Talk, AM 1130. The world is changing. Are you listening? Fox News updates every half hour. This is TwinCitiesNewsTalk.com. 1130 AM. Because you deserve the truth. Welcome back to Up and Adam. I'm Jack Tomzak. That is Ben Cruzy. Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm having a good morning because a bee didn't bite my tongue. Sting. <laughs> sting my tongue. Bee sting. Bee sting. What bites? Mosquitoes? Vikings bite. Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I say that, it's you're ticking off the <laughs> listeners. What are you doing? This is a talk. This is a Viking. People like the Vikings. But you guys do it. No problem. Whatever. We're talking to State Senator Dave Osmek about the cities that are raising property taxes, even though they were giving increased funding from the state government. Uh, Governor Mark Dayton and Revenue Commissioner Myron France said property taxes would go down, will go down because of this increased funding. Now, what I find interesting and hilarious from a political messaging perspective, why would you, like the the, the senator you mentioned, Dave, uh, why would you be specific and In exactly the number and that's going to promise this is going to happen? Because if it doesn't, you look really dumb. Well, exactly. You you leave the local jurisdiction do what the local jurisdictions have to do. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing about city councils and, and and county boards is they want the state to just leave them alone, <laughs> and they won't leave them alone. They keep changing rules. And and everybody who's listening, just because your city didn't get LGA doesn't mean you shouldn't be holding them accountable. Because you should be asking the following question, Mister City Manager or Mister City Administrator, tell me how much money you're saving. Because of the sales tax exemption. Because every city, every county and city in this state is going to save money. They should be returning, according to the tax incident study we got in June, they should be returning at least 50 cents on the dollar in a property ta- property tax reduction. Explain the, the exemption to people so, so they get it. Sure. When the city buys something, they're not paying state sales tax? Right. Until... So until they, buy, they buy paper clips or... Play, vehicles, right? Good paper gig. clips no, up to tr- big dump trucks, a quarter of a million dollar dump trucks. They're going to have to pay to pay a sales tax, and now they won't have to do that. Which really, we all admit at the at the legislature that was sort of a backwashing system of getting getting a tax proposal or taxes through other means. Is that cities were having to pay that going back into the early nineties is when they actually installed this one. Oh, so wow. we sh- we believe, and even the Democrats believe, we shouldn't be double taxing, which is what it is: is that the cities tax it, and then we tax them. Right. So another uh, another city, a couple other cities to talk about too, is the folks, good folks down in Owatonna in Vicki Jensen's district. They're going to be getting a twenty four percent increase in their LGA. Twenty four percent. And We're that is throwing a, it out there. The raw number on that one is uh, the raw number on that seven hundred eighty-two thousand wow. dollars wow. more. So they go from three point one million to three point nine, almost four million in local government aid. So again, I pres- I ask you the question: What do they do? Did they increase? Did they decrease? Did they stay the same? Well, you would hope they would return that money back to the taxpayers. You'd be of wrong the again. City of Otana. You'd be wrong again. City of Otana is doing a flat levy now. Congratulations! Flat a flat wow. levy is better than a three point nine for Matt Schmidt and his district. But a th- but you should be reducing at least giving some of the money back. Right, zero percent is still more than negative six percent, which is what we've been promised. So what they're doing is spend, spend, spend. Yeah. Another city in Vicki Jensen's district is a city, good city of Faribault. Faribault received a poultry mediocre ten percent increase in their LGA, which oh, equates to five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> they got another half million dollars to come out, and they're going to be doing a two percent increase oh, in their God. property taxes. So half a million dollars. Here's the, here's the story. Money. You know, you've got you got people like Vicky Jensen running around saying, "quote They wanted savings to get down uh, uh, to get down to the property tax owners." Well, guess what, Vicky? It ain't happening. What we did at the legislature is we gave eighty million dollars into a fund to put more money into the pockets of the local governments. What do we get for it? Almost nothing. My good city of Mount is reducing their property taxes. I haven't seen their their firm number yet. 
these people can still change this. If you call and you complain to your city council, now that you know what the numbers are, you can still make them drive that number down. They cannot go up any farther, but they can go down. And uh, the DFL sat at the, at the legislature during the special session. What did they say? We can't reduce the farm implement, the farm repair tax. Mm-hmm. We can't get rid of it. We can't get rid of all these other taxes, the telecom taxes, business to business taxes that are there. We can't do it because we don't have the money. Well, guess what? You said this was $80 million was supposed to be property tax reduction. It yep. isn't. I'll tell you what. Let's take the money back. I like that. Take the money back. We can go into session in, in February and say, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to take that money back because you people, when we said that this is a property tax redu- reduction, and that's what the DFL said, right. we're going to say, you know what? We're not going to play this game. We're going to take the money back. Of course, uh, I will Someone ride has in to on stand a, up to the cities and counties. Exactly. But I will ride into St. Paul in February on a unicorn because that <laughs> ain't happening. <laughs> We all know what's going to happen. They're all going to say property tax this, property tax that, and it just ain't so. Outstanding work, Senator Dave Hosmick. Thank you very much. Oh, and shameless plug. Plug away. Shameless plug. Uh, on Sunday the 29th, which is coming, about, coming up about a week from now, from 4 to 6.30 at the Lafayette Club in my district on Lake Minnetonka, the, we, there is a Victory 2014 uh, celebration that's coming up. D- uh, Representative Daryl Issa. So it's, oh, yeah. It's a wow. big name. Wow. And the tickets are reasonably priced. Uh, we'd like you to come out there, uh, come out to the good part of, of Hennepin County. <laughs> you can get the tickets through sd33gop.com or call 763-478-8091. Give-